Hat, check. Sunglasses, check. Notes, check. Pepsi, check. Sources, check. Big skin, check. Oh, and one more thing. 10,000 subscribers, check. Let's go! Texas, Texas, Texas. Uh, to be honest with you, I'm, I'm starting to feel a, a little bit bad for Texas fans. I mean, last year they had to sit through a 5-7, and seven, losing to Kansas in overtime at home. That was a horrible season. First year head coach Steve Sarkeesian already not cutting the mustard, but they're having patience. They're giving him some time, although one year is just one year. But anyways, you get what I'm saying. Coming off of Tom Herman, which I thought was a bad fire. I thought Tom Herman had Texas headed in the right direction. I guess the boosters didn't agree with me and they decided it was time to move on from Tom Herman and get Steve Sarkeesian. I thought that was a bad move. Lateral at best and, and it's proven to be true so far. But now in the offseason, the, the, the worst nightmares, worst case scenario for Texas fans, it's happening. It is happening. Wide receiver Isaiah Nair, he's out for the season with a knee injury. Not not what you were looking for as a Texas fan. And to go along with that, one of their offensive linemen starters, who is projected to be a starter this year, he's out with a knee injury for the entire season as well. Then additional injuries to Jedi Barron and Rashawn Johnson. And it didn't happen at the beginning of the offseason. It's happening at the end of the offseason. That's like worst case scenario. Texas has been struggling to be back for over a decade. I mean, you back up to 23. 13 and it hasn't been all that great for Texas and, and you can't blame it on the recruiting 2013 number 17 2014 number 17 2015 number 10 2016 number 7 2017 number 25 2018 number 3 2019 number 3 2020 number 8 2021 number 15 and then this past year 2022 number 5 pretty good recruiting classes the worst one was 2017 at number 25 but they've had several top 10 recruiting classes Texas can recruit. Texas is Texas. They live in a hotbed of recruiting. But that hasn't translated over to the regular season. This, oh man, look at this, guys. In 2013, they went 8 5 losses at BYU, Ole Miss, Oklahoma State, Baylor, and then to Oregon in the Alamo Bowl. That's not a horrific season, but compared to Texas standards, it's not good. Well, it gets worse. 2014, 6 and 7. Losses to BYU, UCLA, Baylor, Oklahoma, Kansas State, TCU, and Arkansas in the Texas Bowl. 2015, even worse. 5-7. and seven. Losses at Notre Dame, Cal, Oklahoma State, at TCU, at Iowa State, at West Virginia, and Texas Tech. Same thing for 2016. 5-7. Losses at Cal, at Oklahoma State, Oklahoma, at Kansas State, West Virginia, at Kansas, and TCU. At least they had a winning season in 2017. 7-6. Losses to Maryland, at USC, Oklahoma, Oklahoma State, at TCU, and Texas Tech. 2018, it looked like Texas was breaking through. 10-4. and four. Losses to Maryland, at Oklahoma State, West Virginia, and Oklahoma in the Big 12 title game. But then in 2019, Texas starts regressing again. 8-5, losses to LSU, Oklahoma, at TCU, at Iowa State, and at Baylor. 2020 actually looked like a good season. This was the last year that Tom Herman was there. 7-3, losses to TCU, Oklahoma, and Iowa State. Why did you fire Tom Herman after that? And then the first year of Steve Sarkeesian, 5-7, losses at Arkansas, Oklahoma, Oklahoma State, at Baylor, at Iowa State, Kansas, and at West Virginia. They've had three five and seven seasons over the past decade. How is that even possible, Texas? West Virginia hasn't even done that. On top of that, it looks like Hudson Card, the guy that finished last year as the starting quarterback for Texas, is actually beating out the highly touted Quinn Ewers. His recruiting ranking was a perfect score. Five-star recruit. He is getting beat. Last year, Hudson Carr was 51 for 83 for 61.4 percent, threw for 590 yards, five touchdowns, one interception. Slight dual threat quarterback, I guess. 26 carries for 17 yards. That's 0.7 yards a carry and one touchdown. He is beating out Quinn Ewers. That also doesn't look good for Texas. Maybe Hudson Carr is just looking really, really good in the off season, and he's just beating Quinn Ewers straight up. I don't know. But as much as Quinn Ewers has been highly touted, it seems like Quinn Ewers should have won this starting job very, very easily. That's not happening. And Steve Sarkeesian explains to us 
what he's looking for in his quarterback in these scrimmages. Let's see if he leaves anything out. Execution, decision making, accuracy, leadership, body language, understanding the special situations that arise in the scrimmage, third downs, red area, two minute drills. I don't think he left anything out. I, I think he was very detailed in what he was describing. He goes on to say there's going to be a lot of different scenarios that come up and how they manage those situations as they show themselves in scrimmage as opposed to in practice when we're going to do a drill. Uh, Steve uh, Mr. Sarkeesian, Coach Sarkeesian, whatever you want to go by. Yeah, uh, what you said, we, we pretty much thought that's how you judge who's going to win your starting quarterback position. So that really didn't tell us anything. All we know is that Hudson Card is beating out Quinn Ewers for that starting quarterback position as we speak right now. Now, it, it could flip. Maybe Quinn Ewers has a breakout couple weeks. I don't know. Right now, it's looking like Hudson Card is going to be the starting quarterback for Texas. Uh, I, just, I, I, just, I just don't know what to say about Texas anymore. So let's look through the Texas 2022 college football schedule. Now, what I see on here are four, just four for sure wins. Here's their schedule. A home game against UL Monroe, a home game against Alabama, a home game against UTSA, a road game against Texas Tech, a home game against West Virginia, the neutral game against Oklahoma and Dallas, a home game against Iowa State, a road game against Oklahoma State, then a bye week, then a road game to Kansas State, then a home game against TCU, then a road game to Kansas, and then a home game to Baylor. So the four for sure wins for Texas this year is that home game against UL Monroe, the home game against UTSA, the home game against TCU, and the road game against Kansas. That's your four for sure wins. Now, you have four for sure losses, and that's the home game against Alabama, the neutral site game against Oklahoma in Dallas. Yes, I think that's a for sure loss this year. The road trip to Oklahoma State, and the road trip to Kansas State. So those are your four for sure losses, Texas. Then you have four 50-50 football games. These four games will determine your season. First, the road trip to Texas Tech in your fourth game, then the home game against West Virginia, then your home game against Iowa State, and then your home game against against Baylor. So the good news is three of your 50-50 football games are at home. The only one on the road is to Texas Tech. But if you lose to Alabama, Texas Tech, and West Virginia early in the year, you're looking at a two and three start and the seat on which Steve Sarkeesian is sitting on is turned up to broil. Yeah, that's right. Steve Sarkeesian would be put on the hot seat during midseason if that goes down. So a lot is riding on the line with those two games back to back towards the beginning of the year at Texas Tech and West Virginia. Those two games, seriously, those two games could determine your season. Now, before these injuries and before I heard that Hudson Card was beating Quinn Ewers pretty soundly in the quarterback competition, I actually had Texas going 8-4. and four. I had that fluctuating a little bit. I think they could go more like 7-5, and five, possibly 6-6 six and six now. I don't think they're going to miss a vault again, but 8-4 and four is looking more unlikely now. I think you could slip up and lose on the road to Texas Tech or the following game against West Virginia at home, so that's a 7-5 and five season. I know that's only one loss and one win difference from 8-4, and four, but it's a big deal. 7-5, that's not a great year for Texas. I mean, I guess it's a little bit of a bounce back year from last year. But I think Texas would have to see some massive improvement to be okay with 7-5. And, and I just don't know if that's going to happen. So in my opinion, I don't think Texas has found their coach. I said it from the beginning. I thought it was a bad fire to get rid of Tom Herman. It looked like he had things turning around. And on top of that, to fire him just to hire Steve Sarkeesian, that didn't make any sense. You had to eat a lot of money to fire Tom Herman. And now you bring on a guy that's definitely not better than Tom Herman. And he may be about the same as Tom Herman. I don't know. And he could be actually worse than Tom Herman. That would be worst case scenario. But the biggest problem at Texas is culture, guys. You have to get the culture fixed at Texas. Otherwise, this problem is not going away. So, I I'm sorry, Texas fans. I wish I had good news for you. But all this looks like is a lot of bad news. Y'all let me know in the comments section. Do you think Texas is in trouble? Or do you think Texas could be back this year? That's all I got for you for this show. Like and subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you on my next show.